A few days ago, I published the first video about the reliability of the identification capabilities of plant and fungi identification apps. And the first app that I covered was from iNaturalist, an app they call Seek. Seek is a bit different from the standard iNaturalist app. It's designed to run offline, and it does not upload photos unless given permission to do so. What it does is that when it's initially installed, it becomes aware of the user's location and the location can be updated if the user travels. And using a database that is comprised of the images created by iNaturalist users, as well as their observations, it uses some really ingenious software to help the user identify plants and fungi. It's also useful for insects and other species, but we're going to stay focused on plants and fungi. The standard iNaturalist app differs mainly in that it's designed to work online. Insofar as I can tell, it uses the same or similar artificial intelligence protocol. But unlike Seek, to perform an identification, the standard iNaturalist app requires being online. I live in Highland Country where cell towers are far away, and the signal of those that are about are often impeded by the ridges and crests of the land. So if I am going to use an app to identify anything, it's not going to be one that relies on the internet. Also, iNaturalist Seek has the ability to do live identifications. A person needn't actually shoot a picture of whatever the subject of interest is. You just move the camera around the subject, and when it believes that it knows what it is, or at least where it is on the taxonomic scale, it begins offering suggestions. But is one of these apps more reliable than the other? Can any of them actually be used to make reliable identifications of anything? Let's take a look. And I'm not going to be easy on either application. However, before we delve into their workings, I'll add that I do like and use iNaturalist Seek, and I have a genuine respect for the work that iNaturalist is trying to do. Indeed, they're engaged in the same work I am, trying to make the natural world more accessible and understandable, so that everyone can appreciate it and enjoy it, and gain a sense of wonder, perhaps, at the incredible array of biodiversity we find here on our own Earth. My goal in the making of this video is not to undermine the important work of iNaturalist, but simply to remind users of the apps of just how far that particular technology can take them. To compare iNaturalist Seek against the standard iNaturalist app, I used the same five-point scale that I used for Seek, in which I assessed them for species identifications, on-target identifications, and aired identifications. If you saw the previous video, linked here, then you'll already be familiar with how I use this five-point scale to measure the capabilities of Seek and the fact that I worked with multiple images from 30 sample organisms. To recap, I took three pictures of each plant or fungus, and if the organism was so big that I could not get all of it into the picture, then I took images of its three most identifying features. Now, Seek works by adding up live imagery and doesn't need individual pictures. Normally what you would do is take a picture when you feel that you have the best image representing the organism. But multiple images add up in the use of the iNaturalist standard app, and multiple images may help that app in developing an accurate determination of species. However, there were some interesting caveats to that notion, which we'll take a look at shortly. Of the five-point scale, the first point is an on-target identification. An on-target identification means the application was able to correctly identify the organism anywhere along the taxonomic scale, even including all the way down to species. A successful species identification means the species was identified and this variable is counted on its own and with on-targets. A failure to identify its species is an on-target identification that was not refined down to species by the app. An error indicates when the application was wrong about the classification of the organism anywhere on the taxonomic scale. And a final point, what I consider to be a potentially lethal error, is relevant to foragers and indicates if and when the application grossly misidentified an organism, mistaking something potentially deadly for something else entirely. iNaturalist Seek was on target 90% of the time. However, of the 30 samples, it only correctly identified to species 14 times meaning there were 16 failures to identify to species, and iNaturalist Seek committed three errors, one of which was technically only a failure, but potentially so lethal that I counted it an error. In contrast, the standard iNaturalist application was somewhat more successful identifying down to species. Now, it presents species identification differently from Seek. Seek simply suggests whatever species it thinks it is superimposed over the image of the organism. Whereas the standard version takes you to a page where it gives a list of the species that it thinks an organism is, and the list is rated from the thing that it thinks it most likely is to the things that it thinks it least likely is. 
I counted the iNaturalist Standard App's recommendation a success when its first recommendation was the correct species. The iNaturalist Standard App was on target 26 times, or 87%, and failed to identify its species only 8 times. And the iNaturalist Standard App made one more error than the iNaturalist Seek App, for a total of 4 errors. Like Seek, it could not correctly identify the species of a death cap, Amanita phalloides. Unlike Seek, which technically only failed, though the gravity of the failure made an error, the standard iNaturalist app suggested the wrong species of Amanita. So it wasn't even on target, it was a complete error. And for those foragers who would venture to forage Amanitas, something I personally believe to be a fool's errand, if they were to rely on this app for their identification, their lives would be in danger. There are some edible Amanitas, and those that are not edible, well, they lean toward deadly. And identifications are subtle. And just like Seek, the standard iNaturalist app also misidentified another Amanita as an Agaricus fungus. The Agaricus fungi are commonly sought prized forageables, delicious and typically readily identifiable by even a moderately skilled forager. So the iNaturalist standard app's mistaking of an Amanita for an Agaricus is a grave error. I mean, if a forager is going to choose to harvest Amanitas, that's in his or her hands, that's their choice. But for the application to entirely mistake a potentially deadly Amanita for a commonly foraged, widely considered safe genus, that's quite the mistake. And every forager new to mushrooming should take note. A naturalist standard also misidentified the species of coral fungus it was shown, and entirely misidentified, above genus, the wild carrot photos that were presented to it. So what does this tell us? Of the 30 valid tests, Seek was on target 27 times, or 90%. The Unnaturalist Standard App presented similar performance, being on target 26 times, or 87%. Unnaturalist Seek presented 14 successful species identification, or a 47% success rate. The Unnaturalist Standard App did markedly better, presenting 18 successful species identifications, or a 60% success rate. And to take a look at the opposite side of that spectrum, Unnaturalist Seek failed to identify its species 16 times, or 53% of the time whereas the iNaturalist Standard App failed to identify its species 12 times, or 40% of the time. And finally, iNaturalist Seek presented three errors, with one potentially deadly error, while the iNaturalist Standard App presented four errors, with one potentially deadly error. Now, I mentioned earlier that I did notice a couple times there was some bizarre behavior from the iNaturalist Standard App. Given the app more images to work with is supposed to refine its ability to identify the organism, in fact, I was so disturbed that the application mistook a potentially deadly Amanita for an agaricus mushroom that I took multiple images of the Amanita, hoping the application would eventually get it right. When I fed these multiple images to the iNaturalist Standard app, it actually got further and further away from the correct identification, once even mistaking the Amanita for a plant. And I observed the same phenomenon with the wild carrot, Dacus carota, of which I had several images. The iNaturalist Standard app could not seem to figure out what a wild carrot was, and the more images I gave it to work with, the worse its identification became, getting both genus and even family incorrect. So where does this leave us? Well, it leaves us with the same conclusion we drew the last time. Naturalists and foragers must not rely upon identification apps to confirm the identity of whatever plants or fungi they're observing. They may be seen as a starting place, because the majority of the time, they are on target. And typically, they can place an organism to within family or genera, with an okay degree of reliability. And that could save you some time flipping through the pages of a field guide. But both manage correct identification of species, call it about only half the time. And between the two of them, they run a nearly 12% average of errors. For naturalists, such errors are no big deal and may indeed present learning opportunities as long as they remember not to rely on identification apps and go back and double-check those identifications later. For foragers, on the other hand, hmm, well, as I said in the last video, would you want to eat your finds if you knew that roughly 1 in 10 things that you found possessed some degree of toxicity and was potentially even lethal? With all that said, though, I do want to emphasize again that I greatly respect the work that iNaturalist is trying to do. I have faith their technology will get better over time. I doubt very much it will ever replace necessary human involvement in the identification process. In fact, I'm absolutely certain of it for this simple reason. Many plants and fungi look extremely visually similar, and correctly identifying them often involves checking things such as their textures, whether or not they have fine microscopic hairs or feel rough or smooth to the touch, as well as checking their smells, 
their fragrances, whether or not they have a musk or a pleasant perfume, and frequently enough, even checking how they taste. With some mushroom species, the edibles can only be discerned from the inedibles by seeing if they are bitter. So unless identification apps can one day also involve those sensory inputs, they will never replace the human being in the identification process, and therefore can never be considered ultimately authoritative. And thus, they will always have limits that must be acknowledged. Foragers and naturalists must develop and rely upon their own competence and their own skills in order to be able to go out into the natural world and successfully be certain of the organisms that they identify. Thank you for watching. The Naturalist Program is committed to the reliable coverage of natural science and environmental issues. If you like our program, please take a moment to subscribe and like. Hot leaves are turning brown, branches burn.